I have this piece of pin oak. I carved a full-size eagle out of the other six feet or so of it. And it is about 22 inches around. And it's on this side, it's 19 inches long. And it tapers out on the other side to about 17 inches. Gonna make a puppy dog out of it here. This will be a golden retriever, fox red, I think is what they call it. His name in real life is Cooper. So I've got a, a square, rectangle rather. So it'll be flat on the bottom and have a two inch base. And I only need nine inches for Sir Puppy Poo, but I'm gonna make the base about 11. So that's why the box is so wide. And at his highest point with the base, he's gonna be uh, 19 inches. So uh, overall, this is a one half size Labrador Golden Retriever. I've set the block that we're going to make the puppy out of on its side up on top of my jaw horse and I'm going to uh, smooth out and flatten the bottom. You can see here it's got a sawtooth pattern across the bottom and it is very rough and I don't want that, see how rough it is? I don't want that to be on my customer's wood floor kitchen tile and scratching things up. So I'm gonna smooth that out real pretty, get it as flat as I can, and then I'll set it up on its bottom and start carving. Now, when I go to set it up on its bottom, I need to take into account that my base is only a couple inches thick, but my sawhorse grip is three and a half, four inches grip. So I'm gonna take these pieces of oak, set up a platform, flip it up on its bottom, and clamp only the base so that the full carvability is above the jaw of the jaw horse. That's a weird statement. Everything I need to carve is up above the mouth of the jaw horse because I'll have it sitting on those oak pieces instead of on the horse like it is now. These are the three views of Cooper that I'm gonna use for the stencils. This is actually Cooper face on. This is my demo dog from the side and my demo dog from the top. I need the demo dog for the exact proportions and then I gotta get really specific and make it look like Cooper. On the inside of my barn door here is my collage. For reference, you see we got demo dog, top of head, side, and face, and there's Cooper, and there's what Cooper's hips look like, which are very different from my demo dog, but that's my collage for reference. Whenever you get ready to carve, to put your stump on your carving surface, or in your jaw horse, or your block of wood as I have here, before you set it up, take good care of the bottom. You'll be really glad that you did when you finished it and you're ready to go, ta-da! And you're gonna go, oh man, the bottom is so rough, I can't set that on the kitchen table. I can't set it on a wood floor. I can't put this on the tile. It's gonna do damage. Take care of it first before you get started. This is very rough. It's got a sawtooth pattern on it from the chainsaw. And I'm going to take my angle grinder and I'm going to smooth this all out and get it as flat as I can. Hopefully I'll get it level also, but if not, at the end I'll put rubber feet on it to take care of the leveling issue. So take good care of the bottom. You'll be glad that you did when you get through.
now what I'm doing is making sure that this bottom two inches all the way around is presentable where I can do a little final sanding to it later and put a finish on it. So right now, the bottom is smooth. The goal is not to have it like tabletop flat. I just want it so that it is smooth enough to not do damage what it's sitting on. It's not a, a visual part of the sculpture, but it is a structural part of the sculpture and it needs to do no harm when it's doing its thing of holding up Sir Puppy Dog. I'm doing a couple inches all the way around and then doing the bottom nice and flat. There's a look at how to prepare the base of a sculpture. This one is gonna have a two inch base. So I have uh, smoothed it out all the way around, two inches up from the bottom. And then I've smoothed the base out, not completely flat. You can still see that there are chainsaw marks. It's kinda cool, but it's smooth. It's not going to catch on anything on the floor if it's scooted around. And if there's a leveling issue when I get finished, then we'll put rubber feet on it. This portion here is very rounded because it had uh, some very punky, rotted wood. It was very, very soft, and I didn't want to leave that on there. So you'll notice it's more of a rounded look here, which is not what I was after originally but it's what the wood called for. Sometimes you alter your plan, your concept, to whatever the, the wood wants to do. That's it for the bottom. I've learned a new term working on this project. And the new term is withers. I learned that the top of the dog's shoulder is its withers and that's what determines the height of the dog. So if you say uh, the standard Labrador Retriever is 22 inches tall, that means from the base of the pad to the top of the withers, it's 22 inches. So in this case, I'm making it uh, one half scale. It's gonna be 11 inches from the top of the withers to the bottom of the pad and I'm gonna start sketching it in.
I want to encourage you today that if you put your hand and your mind to something to create that you are an artist own it stand up under it be confident in it we are all created in the image of God and like him we get to create so go out there and make some art be confident in your skills and enjoy being a creator.